good evening students are you able to hear me yes sir okay yes, sir Listen. Sir, are you able to see my board? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. So listen. This question is: Find the intervals in which the function given by sir, your presentation yeah. is not in the full screen, sir. What is happening? It's small, no, sir. No. No big. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See this. Twelfth question is: Find the intervals in which the function given by f of x is equal to sine three x, where x belongs to zero to pi by two, is increasing, and the second part is decreasing. So if I take f of x is equal to sin 3x right if we take f of x is equal to sin 3x then what is f dash of x it is 3 cos 3x right so if i equate this value to be greater than 0 right then it is going to be the condition for increasing right so when i say cos 3x is greater than 0 that implies which quadrant is cos positive in which quadrant is cos positive cos is positive in the first and fourth quadrant so cos is positive in the first and the fourth quadrant right so if you observe when i say cos 3x is greater than 0 then 3x can either belong to 0 to pi by 2 or it should belong to 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi am i right but what did they ask they asked us to check the increasing and decreasing parameter only between 0 to pi by 2 am i right so i don't need this thing in this question so for this question this is not needed right so when 3x lies between 0 to pi by 2 divided with 3 on both the sides 0 will be less than x less than pi by 6 meaning when x belongs to 0 to pi by 6 right when x belongs to 0 to pi by 6 it is increasing function right similarly if cos 3x is going to be less than 0 right then 3x belongs to right so how much will the interval be actually once you find the increasing no decreasing is easy guys i am not able to understand if you guys could understand or not am i clear with the first part yes sir okay now listen to this carefully so in the interval 0 to pi by 
if 0 to pi by 6 it is going to increase it is going to be an increasing function then in the remaining interval that is going to be from pi by 6 to pi by 2 it is going to be a decreasing function that's it so between 0 to pi by 6 it is increasing but pi by 6 to pi by 2 it is going to be decreasing Sir, here with this. Excuse, me, excuse me, sir. Ah, tell me. Sir, shouldn't shouldn't zero come under closed bracket? It will be included right, for increasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not able to hear you. Sir, zero should come under closed brackets, right? Yeah, zero can be taken in closed bracket because uh, when cos x is zero, it is going to be one. It is going to be greater than zero only. You can take this in the closed bracket. Right, you can take this in the close bracket because close bracket is given here. Zero can also be included because the domain is defined like that. So zero to pi by six, but pi by six to pi by two, it is going to be decreasing. Okay. So, so Pi by two in close bracket concept. Pi by two, what will happen is uh, it will be zero. No? I put x is equal to pi by two, mm. it will be a zero. That is oh. why I didn't take it. Yes. Okay, because we took three cos, uh, sorry, three cos three x to be greater than zero. See, actually, this is a question from previous year book. There it was increasing and decreasing. But check is in this, the current book, did they give it as zero to pi by two closed interval or open interval? The current book, the new one. So this part is there, no. X belongs to 0 to pi by 2. For that one, did they give it in close bracket? Close bracket only. They gave only close bracket. Huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. But 0 can be included, pi by 2 cannot be included. Huh? See, actually, as per the concept that I taught you, the question they are saying only increasing and decreasing. What should I have actually written the identity as? 3 cos 3x, I should have written it as greater than or equal to 0. But here, I told you in the previous class, no, according to the new textbook and according to, the, according to this year's concept, increasing and decreasing means strictly increasing and strictly decreasing. Clear with that? Shall I proceed? Yes, sir. Okay. So listen, there is another trigonometry based problem. Find the intervals in which the function f given by f of x is equal to sin x plus cos x, where x belongs to 0 to 2 pi is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. So the domain is taken as 0 to 2 pi. In that 0 to 2 pi, our interest is to find out where the sin x plus cos x is decreasing or increasing. So if I take f of x is equal to this thing, sin x plus cos x, then f dash of x will be equal to cos x minus sin x. Right. So, when f dash of x is greater than 0, because here strictly increasing or strictly decreasing, right, implies cos x minus sin x is greater than 0, which implies cos x is greater than sin x. Right. If you observe, if you divide it with cos x on both the sides, you will get 1 is greater than tan x or tan x is less than 1. So, where is tan x less than 1 in the interval 0 to 2 pi? 
so x belongs to 0 to pi by 4 union x belongs to 0 to pi by 4 why 0 to pi by 4 because it is a first quadrant so tan x is equal to 1 is taking place at x is equal to pi by 4 when tan x is less than 1 it is taking place at less than pi by 4 but greater than 0 right where else can tan x be less than 1 Guys, can I have some response? So is it zero to pi by four? Hmm. Tell me what. I'm not able to hear you if you're speaking. So is it pi by four to pi by two? See, pi by four to pi by two, tan x greater than one, no? Don't guess, think about it. It is not negative in the third quadrant. It is not negative in the third quadrant. Yeah. Sir. So where do you get it? Sir, is it pi by pi by four? Two by two. Tell me one thing. Are you able to understand my question or not? I'll explain it. Listen. I don't. I'm not able to understand. Are you able to understand what I'm asking or not? So I am saying there is an inequality like this. Tan x So there is an inequality like this saying that tan x is less than 1. Okay. Meaning if I prepare a table like this okay, for you to understand if I prepare a table like this, zero, pi by six, pi by four, pi by three, and pi by two. Okay, pi by two. Then it is going to be two pi by three, three pi by four, you can take five pi by six and pi. Like this, can I write it? Can I prepare a table? So if I say this table is for tan x, what is tan zero? Zero. Tan pi by six is one by root three. Tan pi by 4 is 1. What is tan pi by 3? It is going to be root 3. Observe root 3 is greater than 1. Right. So root 3 is greater than 1. Similarly, tan pi by 2 is going to be not defined. Tan 2 pi by 3 will be how much? Tan 2 pi by 3 is minus tan pi by 3. This negative of root 3 this is going to be minus 1. This is minus 1 by root 3 and it will be a 0. You observe the cyclic pattern. No. It starts with 0, within pi it comes back, comes back to 0. Then what else is there? Then again you will be writing the angle still 2 pi. So I am asking like this, if you observe when x is between 0 to pi by 4, when x is between 0 to pi by 4, it is less than 1. That is why I took when tan x is less than 1, that is why I took x belongs to 
zero to pi by four. What should happen? There should be a union. Union of what value? Where else is it less than one? Two pi by three to five pi by six. Okay. How much is it? Two pi, pi by pi. three to two pi, pi by three to how much will the values be again? Pi pi by six. Again, you will have one by root three. One, you will have root three, and again infinity. This will be at three pi by two. Again, the values will decrease. There will be a cyclic pattern. Minus root three, minus one, minus one by root three, and zero. Right. It keeps going like this. Like this, I'm asking where all is it less than one? That's it. Okay. So let me make it simple for you. When I say tan x is less than one, if I take tan x is equal to one, okay. What are all the points I'm going to get on the number line? Where is tan x equal to one? It is pi by four. It is at five pi by four. Where else is it? So here I have a zero, and here I have a two pi. Now tell me, where where is tan x less than one? Between zero to pi by four and five pi by four to two pi. Can I say that? Similarly, between zero to two pi, what will happen is, if zero to pi by four and pi pi by four to two pi, it is increasing. Then between pi by four to pi pi by four, it will be decreasing. Between pi by four to pi pi by four, it will be decreasing. Okay. Okay, so we'll do a similar kind of a problem based on this. Sir, but from two pi by three to pi also, it's like less than one measure points. But I'm only taking the critical points into consideration. I'm only taking critical points into consideration. I'll show you. So, tan x is less than one. One minute, wait. Let me take some extra slides.
So listen. I'll give you an alternate way to solve this problem. So when I differentiated, what is that I got? I got cos x greater than sin x. Am I right? So I'll explain it with this perspective. Have a look at it. Are you guys with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, listen. This is 0. This is 2 pi. So what is the graph of cos 2x? The graph of cos 2x is this, right? So cos 0 is 1. Cos 2 pi is also 1, right? This is going to be pi by 2. This is going to be 3 pi by 2. And this is going to be pi, OK? So what is the graph for sin x? One minute. So this is a graph for cos 2x. And this is a graph for sine. Okay. So this value is how much? Pi by 4. This value is how much? Can you tell me how much is this value? It is 5 pi by 4. So 5 pi by 4 is 45 into 3. It is 225. Guys, are you clear with this or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, answer my question. This graph cos x and just to avoid confusion, this graph is sin x. Where is cos x greater than sin x? You tell me, you now look at the graph and tell me. Where is cos x always on top? Zero to pi by four. That's right. So zero to pi by four. And see, they are meeting at two places, this place and this place. What are the two places at which they are meeting? They are meeting at pi by four and pi pi by 4, right? So between 0 to pi by 4, cos x is above sin x. And after pi pi by 4 to 2 pi, is it not above sin x? Guys, are you able to understand this or not? Yes, sir. Yes. So similarly, here if it is going to be increasing, then in the remaining interval, it is supposed to be decreasing. So I thought of explaining with graph, but okay. I went with the table. So instead of table, the graph gives you a better explanation. In which interval does it decrease? X belongs to 5 by 4 to 5 pi by 4. It is decreasing. Make sense? Guys, please respond. No? Are you able to understand or not? Understand, sir. Yes. Please make a note of it.
Done? Yes, sir. So we'll, so we'll do some problems from the textbook. So six point two, right? So what is the answer for the first question? F of x is equal to three x plus seventeen, and x belongs to R. This is the domain of this function. Show that the function f of x is equal to three x plus seventeen is increasing on R. So what is that we need to do? When you take f dash of x, it comes out to be three. Since Three is always greater than zero. This is considered to be a increasing function. This considered to be an increasing function. Shall I proceed? This is a very simple problem, right? Next, f of x is equal to e power two x. Show that the function f of x is equal to e power two x is increasing on R. So here the domain is going to be R. We need to prove that there is always increasing on R. So for that, what we will do is take f dash of x, right? So when you differentiate, you get two times e power two x, right? So if I equate it to be greater than zero, remember e power anything is going to be greater than zero because the graph is going to be either like this or like this so if you have e power positive value the graph is going to be increasing right whereas when you have e power negative value it is going to be like this but in both the scenarios if you observe it is always above y axis so since it is always above y axis we can consider that 2 e power 2x is always greater than 0. Hence, f of x is going to be an increasing function on the domain of it. Is the point here? Yes, sir. Yes. Right? 
Shall I proceed? Okay, sir. So the third question is show that the function f of x is equal to sin x is a increasing between 0 to pi by 2 and the second part is decreasing between pi by 2 to pi. Right? This is what we are supposed to do. So it's a very simple problem. Basically, if you see the domain is restricted between 0 to pi. So between 0 to pi, if you see, if I take f dash of x, it is going to be cos x. So when I say cos x is greater than 0, then it is considered to be an increasing function. Right? Where, where will cos x be greater than 0 between 0 to pi? It is between 0 to pi by 2 because this belongs to the first quadrant. Right? It belongs to the first quadrant. Similarly, for decreasing function, what should happen? Cos x should be less than 0, which implies x belongs to pi by 2 to pi, which belongs to the second quadrant. Right, which belongs to the second quadrant. So to observe this graphically, what we can say is the graph for sin x is like this. But since we are concerned only between 0 to pi, Right. So if I take this point, it is going to be pi by 2. So between 0 to pi by 2, it is going upwards, hence it is increasing. And from pi by 2 to pi, it is going downwards, hence it is decreasing. Here it is increasing and then it is decreasing. Here. So, if you observe, there is another part given saying it is neither increasing nor decreasing between 0 to pi. Hence, see, since between 0 to pi by 2, it is increasing. And from pi by 2 to pi, it is going to decrease. It is both increasing and decreasing between 0 to pi. Hence, we can conclude it is neither increasing nor decreasing between 0 to pi. Right? Next. Shall I proceed? Listen. Fourth one. Find the intervals in which the function f of x is equal to 2x square minus 3x is A increasing and B it is decreasing. Yes. 
So find the intervals in which this function 2x square minus 3x is first increasing and the second is decreasing. So before we start solving, we need to know the domain of the function. So to know the domain of the function, x belongs to r because it's a polynomial function. For a polynomial function, the domain is going to be real numbers, right? So when I take f dash of x, it is going to be 4x minus 3. Right, it is going to be 4x minus 3. Now, for the function to be increasing, f dash of x should be greater than 0, which implies 4x minus 3 should be greater than 0. Connected. Connected. Guys, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was not audible since when? So when you were explaining why this was a decreasing function, sir. when I was explaining which problem. So the same problem, but when you were explaining the decreasing function. Okay, now my mobile got switched off. So I'll repeat that part of it. Listen. The mic got switched off. Sorry. So when we talk about the decreasing function, right? So then f dash of x will be less than zero, which implies 4x minus three is less than zero. So that clearly indicates that x less than three by four, the function is going to be decreasing. So we can write x belongs to minus infinity to three by four, the function is going to be decreasing. Is the point clear?
Shall I proceed? Yes, sir. So now listen. So if I look at the fifth problem, f of x is equal to 2x cube minus 3x square minus 36x plus 7, right? Is A increasing, B decreasing, okay? Okay, listen. So the solution here is when we find f dash of x, it is going to be 6x square minus 6x minus 36. Right. So for the function to be increasing, f dash of x should be greater than 0, which implies if I take that 6 outside, 6 into x square minus x minus 6 is greater than 0, right? x square minus x minus 6 is greater than 0, which implies x minus correction, x minus 3 into x plus 2 is greater than zero. X minus three into X plus two is greater than zero. So this indicates that when X belongs to minus infinity to minus two, union three to infinity, this is an increasing function. When it belongs to minus infinity to minus two, union three to infinity, it becomes an increasing function. Similarly, when I talk about a decreasing function, then f dash of x should be less than 0 implies this thing that is x minus 3 into x plus 2 should be less than 0. This implies x belongs to minus 2 to 3, right? So here the function is going to be decreasing. So between the interval minus infinity to minus 2 union 3 to infinity, it is an increasing function, whereas between minus 2 to 3, it is a decreasing function. So make a note of this. Yeah. Shall I proceed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
so let's look at the sixth problem the sixth problem is find the intervals in which the following functions are strictly increasing or strictly decreasing so the first question is x square plus 2x minus 5 so we need to say see where this function is increasing or decreasing so the domain of this function is x belongs to r so what is f dash of x f dash of x is going to be 2x plus 2 right so for the function to be increasing f dash of x should be greater than 0 which implies 2 into x plus 1 should be greater than 0 so this clearly indicates that x should be greater than minus 1 right so when x belongs to minus 1 to infinity the function is said to be an increasing function function is said to be an increasing function then what about a decreasing function so when i take f dash of x to be less than 0 this implies 2 into x plus 1 is less than 0 this clearly indicates that x is less than minus 1 right so when x belongs to minus infinity to minus 1 the function is said to be decreasing so the function is said to be decreasing Right. Okay. The next one is the second question says. It is 10 minus 6x six minus 2x square. If this is considered to be the function, then the domain of this function is still going to be x belongs to r. Right. So when this is f of x, it is 10 minus 6x six six minus 2x square. So if I take f dash of x, it is going to be minus 6 minus 12x. So, f dash of x is going to be greater than 0 implies 6 plus 12x is greater than 0. Actually, it is minus of 6 plus 12x, which is greater than 0. This implies 6 plus 12x is less than 0 because remember, whenever the inequality goes to the other sign, the sign of the inequality will change. When this is the scenario, this clearly indicates that. 6 is less than minus 12x and or I'll put it like this correction. So this clearly indicates that 12x is less than minus 6 which implies x is less than minus half x is less than minus half so when x belongs to minus infinity to minus half the function is going to be the function is going to be increasing function right similarly if you observe when f dash of x is less than 0 then you will get the interval where these values are left out that is going to be from x belonging to minus half to infinity the function is said to be decreasing it is said to be decreasing clear with this
clear with this or not? Yes, sir. Clear, sir. Excuse me, sir. Shall I proceed? Sir. Yeah, tell me that. Sir, can you show the previous question, sir? Yeah, tell me. So shouldn't, shouldn't the differentiation be minus x minus 4x? Oh. So yeah. I, I think you don't expand the 2x squared. So it should be minus That's 4x. Right. That's right. So actually I have to erase everything. Sorry guys, I'll do this problem again. There is a mistake. So question B is 10 minus 6x minus 2x squared. And the domain for this function is x belongs to R because it is also a polynomial function. So if I take f dash of x here, this is going to be minus 6 minus 4x. So when the function is considered to be increasing, then f dash of x will be greater than 0, which implies minus 6 minus 4x is greater than 0, right? So I'll take the minus sign outside. So minus of 6 plus 4x is greater than 0 implies 6x, 6 plus 4x is going to be less than 0 because minus sign goes to the other side, right? Then I can write 4x is less than minus 6, which implies x is less than minus 2 divided by 3. So x is going to be less than minus 2 divided by 3. So when x belongs to minus infinity to minus 2 by 3, this function is said to be an sir, it's three by two, sir. increasing function. So minus 3 by 2. Uh, Yes, sir, it's minus 3 by 2. So this implies x is less than minus 3 by 2, which implies when x belongs to minus infinity to minus 3 by 2, this function is said to be an increasing function. Right. So similarly, for the function to be decreasing, f dash of x should be less than zero, which implies when which implies minus of six plus four x is less than zero or I can write 6 plus 4x is greater than 0. Then 4x will be greater than minus 6 and x will be greater than minus 3 by 2. That implies when x belongs to minus 3 by 2 to infinity, the function is said to be decreasing. So when it belongs to minus 3 by 2 to infinity, it is going to be a decreasing function. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So I'll stop this class with this. We'll do the remaining problems tomorrow. Okay. Any other questions? Is everything clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then we'll wind up. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, my.